In this video, I'll show you how to search for any value in a deeply nested object. Just to give you an example, consider this object here. The function that I create finally will be able to search for any value in this object. And the cool thing is the value can be any object, array or just any primitive value. For example, if I try to find the value 36, then it will return true because 36 does exist here. If I try to find this object here, then it will return true as well because this object is present here as the value of more stuff property. And if I try to find the array 4 or 5, that will return true as well since it exists as a property here. But if I try to find let's say the value 74, then it returns false because it's nowhere to be found in this object. And another cool thing is, if I try to find the value 4, then 4 is also a value within this array. So the console will log true in this case as well. So the logic will be able to search for values within an array as well. Alright, so now let's begin with writing the logic for this code. I'm going to try to keep it as simple as I can. First, create a function named contains which takes two parameters, the object I want to search the value in and the value I'm looking for. I'll call this function here and pass the nested object and the value 36 as arguments. Actually, I'll call this function a bunch of times more with different target values. So each of these function calls will try to look for their respective values within the nested object. And while writing the code, I'll highlight different target values from time to time to help you understand better regarding why I'm writing a specific edge case or logic. So moving forward, now within the contains function, I'll start writing the main logic. So first of all, I'll add a few base cases. So if obj is equal to the target value, then I'll of course return true. Don't worry, I'll write this is equal function soon. For now, just know that is equal function is going to compare the current object with our value and return us true or false accordingly. After that, I'll add another check, which is a required edge case, where if obj is not an object or array, then simply return false. Which is obvious because if nested object was null or not an object, then how would we even find our target value to begin with? So this is an important base case as well. And then if we surpass both the conditions above, then it means our target value is nested somewhere inside. And so I'll recursively iterate through each key in the object. And if the value is found, I'll simply return true. And if the value isn't found after all recursive iterations are complete, then I'll simply return false outside here indicating the value was nowhere to be found within the object. Now this is all it takes to find any value in a nested object. However, I must write the is equal function now to make the entire logic work perfectly. Here we can first directly check if the type of the obj and value are equal or not. If they aren't equal then we can directly return false here and is equal would be false. After that we can add another check where if the type of obj is not an object then it might be a primitive value. So I'll compare obj with value directly and if they're equal then is equal will automatically return true meaning we found the value. Otherwise this comparison will return false. Now if the above two conditions don't come into play then we can add another condition for arrays where if obj is an array and target value is also an array then I'll call a function arrays equal and pass it the obj and value as arguments. I'll create this function soon, but by the name of it, this function will check if both the arguments are equal provided they both are an array. So this part of our logic should handle checks for values that are an array. And I'll return the result of this function. So if the array arguments are equal, then it will return true, which will allow is equal function to return true. Otherwise, it will return false. And now, if none of the above three conditions are met, which means the value isn't a primitive type or an array, then it means the value should be an object. And now to compare our target value with the current object we're iterating through, I'll first create two keys, which will contain object.keys of obj and value respectively. So both keys1 and keys2 will contain an array of all keys present in the current object we're iterating through and the target value. Then I'll compare the length of both the keys. If they aren't equal, then obviously both the objects aren't equal and I can simply return false. But if they are equal, then I'll iterate through the keys of keys1, which is the current object we are iterating through, and for each key in keys1, I'll check if it's not present in keys2, or if the value of that key in object is not equal to the value of that same key in the target value. If any of these conditions occur, then I'll return false, because this simply says that either the target value doesn't have the same keys as the object we are iterating through, or if they have the same keys, then the value of those keys and target value and the object we are iterating through isn't the same. In both cases, if any of them occur, it means the object we are currently iterating through isn't equal to the target value, and so we return false. And then at the end of the is equal function, I'll simply return true, because it means the current object is equal to the target value, otherwise it would have returned false in the previous condition itself. 
Now I'll quickly implement the arrays equal function. Remember value in this case will be an array if we are reaching this function. So first I'll check if array and value aren't of the same length. If they aren't, then I'll return false, which would then of course mean they aren't equal. Otherwise I'll simply iterate through each element of any array, because of course they're of the same length if we're reaching here, and then I'll check if any value of the array is not equal to any value in our target value. Then of course, I'll return false, meaning the arrays don't match. And so the current array within an object, or just an array we're iterating through, isn't equal to our target value. And so is equal function would also end up returning false. And I'm using is equal function here because the array could have objects, normal primitive values, or just arrays within it as well. And our is equal function checks for all those cases. So instead of rewriting those checks in here, calling the is equal function is a much better choice. And then lastly, I'll return true here, because if none of the conditions above were executed, then it means the target value array does exist in the nested object. So now let's test this code. I already had the console logs added here. These logs will print the result whether true or false for each of the values we have passed as the argument, depending on whether they are present or not. So if I check the output now, you can see it prints true for the first four logs and false for the last two. True because you can see these values do exist here, 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 and here. And false because you can see these two values don't exist anywhere. So that's all for the video. If you found it insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for more.